politely as I can, I'm out of there. But we hadn't really had, this was the best talk we had with anybody. And the pastor was all enamored with us. So we were, he was just talking and I'm, think, I'm thinking, come on, come on, come on, man. You know, but he's talking now and he and the guys got this conversation going and it had nothing happening. It's nothing happening. So it's going on and on and on. And finally, after what seemed like forever, we were able to get away from that guy. And I'm so frustrated now I can't stand myself. And I walk, we walked down the sidewalk, and it was a fenced-in yard. We opened the fence, the gate of the fence, and walked out, and we closed it behind. And he said, what do you want to do? I, and my first reaction was to say, let's, let's just quit for today and go home. But the Holy Ghost checked me. And I said, no, let's do one more house. We walked across the street, opened the gate, walked up the sidewalk, knocked on the door, Nobody was home. Turned around, walked back down the sidewalk. Listen now. I had my back to the street, closing the gate, and a car pulls up behind me. This lady in her late 20s, early 30s got out. And I, I introduced myself and the pastor, and I said, you know, we're having a revival, and we just wanted to stop by and invite you to services. Have you ever been on Pentecostal services before? She ignored exactly what I said. She looked at me, and she said, you know, I've been reading the Bible, but I don't understand it. Would you come in and explain it to me? Truth before the Lord. I said, well, sure. And, and I, if I was by myself, I wouldn't have gone to the house alone with a lady. Uh, you don't want to let your good be evil spoken of. It's true. But I, there was two of us, so I felt comfortable. We went in the house. He sat in a chair, and I sat on the couch, held her Bible, and I, I taught her the new, the, what the New Testament was, what it was prophesied to be in the Old Testament, brought her through the Gospels and showed her what Jesus said it was going to be, and then showed her in the book of Acts how it came to pass. She wanted to understand the Bible, and I, showed, I explained to her the Old and New Testament, how it all fit together, and what she could have. I thought I did a pretty good job of it. I said, she had, you have any questions? She said, no. I see that. She said, but I do have one question. She said, I was sitting on this couch yesterday with my Bible open, reading it. And I said to God right about this time yesterday, I don't understand the Bible. Would you send somebody to explain it to me? And then she said this to me. Where were you? I was expecting you yesterday. We quit the day before one house away from hers. Before we finished, knock on the door, her best friend walked in. I gave her the whole spiel again. From that one house, within a week, we baptized seven adults, and all of them got the Holy Ghost, and all of them became foundational to the revival of that church from that one door. Thank you for the applause. Uh, obviously, you think that was a, an, a, a performance? I'm not trying to insult you here. But if, if I told that in a way to make you think that I can do that and you can't, I beg your forgiveness. I'm telling you, there are people out there right now that are hungry. You just have to be willing to find them. Even if it means a few people aren't kind to you while you're determining they're not hungry. And trust me, the Lord is going to let you talk to enough people who don't want this to test your motive and your determination to be used. And if you're only able and willing to talk to people that are always kind and always want this, 
you're never willing to be in a situation where you talk to people that reject it and maybe even aren't kind to you. You're never going to win a soul. You're not going to do it. Not going to happen. I started off last night telling you about that classmate of mine at the Naval Academy who was the first one who got baptized to get the Holy Ghost. What I didn't tell you was before, within the next six months there, there were seven midshipmen that were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Fruit given to a guy that wasn't even looking for fruit. I wasn't looking for fruit. I was looking for truth. But people are hungry. There's people in your building where you live that are hungry. There are people that ride the train with you, that walk the streets with you. They're hungry. But you have to be, you have to let the Lord give you a sensitivity to them. And you have to have your ears open, listening to open doors. Maybe some would call it eavesdropping. But what you're doing is you're listening for people to tell you they're hungry. Listening to somebody, listening carefully to where somebody is hinting they don't even know they're hinting they're hinting that they know they need something they don't have they'll tell you if you're listening they'll let you know if you're sensitive to it you may be sitting in a restaurant and overhear a conversation behind you where someone is telling whoever's sitting at the table with them that uh, that, that their life is a mess and they don't know what to do and that they they feel so discouraged or they're so depressed and you have to be willing to have enough boldness to turn around and say, pardon me, I wasn't trying to overhear your conversation, but can I share something with you? Life happens anytime, any place. Doors are open anytime, any place to the person that wants to be used of God and that is sensitive to him anytime any place if you're sensitive now I will say this to you there are some situations you need to be very careful about I encourage people to be very very careful how they witness to people during work hours you don't want your good to be evil spoken of and if your boss finds out you're using all of his time that you're supposed to be working with preaching to people, then you're going to have your good evil spoken of. But you have breaks, and there's a lunch period. And, and if, you, if somebody brings something up to you, instead of just launching into work time and talking right then, you say to them, thank you for sharing that with me. Can, can we talk on break for a few minutes? Now, if they don't respond to that, don't worry about it. Or if when you try to talk to them, that momentary openness is closed, leave it in God's hands. Now you know somebody to pray for. And you go and you go pray for that person. And, and you're sensitive and you wait for the Lord to open that door back up. This is a spiritual work. This isn't a bunch of religious people out trying to make converts to a doctrine. This is a spiritual work, and you do it spiritually, and you're sensitive to God doing it. But the most important thing is, you have to have something to give to them. You and Jesus have to be in tune. Your relationship with Jesus has to be right. I don't mean you've never made, you don't make any mistakes, but you've you make sure that you're not carrying around guilt. You make sure that your life is filled up because you worship Him. And you spend time praying in tongues. And, and, and you make sure that you're full of the Spirit. So people can feel that. Maybe, as I said earlier, and, it, and it's really definitely better than it was earlier. Because I've gone a direction here that I had no intention of going. If you haven't picked up on that, there's none of this in your notes. But we prayed. And something happened in this room. And now, I've just spent the last however minutes, 15, 20 minutes or more, talking about something I had no intention of talking about.